Greetings, beloved Pastor Dave here. This is the day the Lord has made. Rejoice and be glad in it. Have you ever been touched by an angel? I'm going to share my story of being touched by an angel with you. It happened in 1976. Old Pastor Dave's been around for a while. I've had a few other experiences in my lifetime with angels, but I'm going to share my story from 1976. Now, I am still your watchman on the wall. My feet are firmly planted and I will not be moved. But today, we will give no attention to Satan and his works. Uh, no earthquakes, no natural disasters, nothing today. Our focus is going to be on glorifying our Heavenly Father. Now, have you ever been touched by an angel? I want you to, if you're capable, to make a video response to this video touched by an angel and share your story with others and if not just leave me comments and, and share your story but if you can do a video response I want to share Kay's story she's a viewer of mine and sent me a message and asked that I share her experience of being touched by an angel and I'm going to do that right now this is Kay's story then you can hear Pastor Dave's did you say 1976 Pastor Dave? <laughs> I'd love to share my story, and you are welcome to share this as well. This is Kay's story. When my grandma was dying a little over a year ago, I was a mess. You see, my grandparents helped my dad to raise me. When my parents divorced when I was four years old, my mom left me. So my dad, he got me. As a young man that was 20, needed some help. So my grandparents stepped in to help. Taught me a lot to respect myself and others to have manners. Don't judge and many more important things and I was really close to them now when my grandpa passed it was hard but not as hard as my grandma she taught me to crochet and to cook and we were close as close could be I love this person so much so when she was living this world leaving living this leaving this world it took a toll on me I couldn't eat nor sleep after a few days of sitting with her in the hospital. I went home for the night and once again I couldn't sleep and was crying asking God not to take her. Please, please don't take her. Not now. She was 83 and lived a great life. As I sobbed I felt the edge of my bed dip. As if someone sat down I felt love, peace, caring. I felt a hand upon my shoulder and a whisper. It will be okay. Sleep. The next thing I remember is waking up. I went back to the hospital and told my uh, grandma goodbye, that I will see you again, and I kissed her forehead. Then I walked outside the door with the rest of my family. As I sat there, I felt like someone had come with me. I got up and walked down the hall just for a minute and was waved to come back. I was met by my dad that said she's gone. I was heartbroken, but no, I know where she was going. I walked back to her room where we prayed over the body. As I looked at her, I noticed her body was just a vessel and her spirit was no longer there. I walked out of the room, turned one last time, and the sun was shining in the window. I comforted my family and said, I'm so sad she's gone, but happy where she is at and we will see her again and you will you will Kay I look back on my experience to help me get through the hard times I believe an angel was there sitting on my bed and comforted me when I needed someone I'm glad to share my story I haven't told many people please take care and you will all be in my prayers love Kay what a wonderful story what a wonderful story. Now, if I can, I'm going to share. I've, I've had a few experiences in my life with angels, and I will share the others. Um, but right now, I'm going to share a very uh, true, very true experience that I feel I was touched by an angel. It was 1976, and how I know that. My firstborn child, my son David Michael, was born in October. 
October 11th of 1975. Now, I got married young, and I was working in a factory, and uh, I had, back then they didn't care about work boots and that, and I should have known better. I stepped on a pallet and I drove a nail right through my foot, so I had to have medical treatment. I was out of work for quite some time, and I was basically broke with a brand new baby. And the reason I know it's 1976, because it was February, and the, the temperature was down to maybe one or two degrees, and it was freezing. And we didn't have no milk, no formula, no food. And my wife's mother said, if you can make it here, if you can make it to my home, I'm going to pack up some bags of groceries for you and give you money for gas. I didn't have enough gas to get there. And I pleaded with my wife, stay home. It's freezing. It's February. It's two degrees outside. Stay home with the baby. But you know how you women can be. We get pretty stubborn sometime. And she insisted on going. It's her mom. She wanted to see her mom. So against my better judgment, she came and we wrapped the baby up. And um, we headed out and I was praying the whole way. I was praying. I was living in the city of River Rouge where I grew up back then. And I had to make it to Detroit to um, pass Woodmere to Waterman Street. And I was basically had no gas. And I prayed the whole way. I got to Fort Street in Detroit. It was nighttime too. It was like 10, 11 o'clock at night. And the snow was blowing. And it was so bitter cold. And I had the heat on as high as I could put it on for it keep the baby warm and of course the worst thing that could have ever happened I got the car to the curb I ran out of gas and I had no money I had a gas can in the trunk there's an old Ford LTD wagon I remember it like yesterday here it is the pitch darkness of night I'm in a bad area Fort Street in Detroit just past Woodmere by the cemetery there and I run out of gas and I pray because now without the car running, there's no heat to keep the baby warm. It's way too far to walk to my mother-in-law's house with a brand new baby and my wife. And no way to keep the baby warm. And I prayed. And I could see headlights coming up behind me. So I opened the trunk. I got my gas can out. I didn't know what to do. I didn't have a penny in my pocket. And it was a black Lincoln town car. And it was a a wonderful elderly man dressed in a black suit coat and I noticed an elderly woman was in the front passenger seat and they, they looked so white is what I couldn't understand so white and he was very very tall he got out of the car and asked if he could help and I explained the situation and he says let me take you let me take you to the gas station so I put the gas can in the trunk of his uh, brand new Lincoln town car and we filled the gas can with some gas, and I pleaded with him, will you um, give me an address where I can send this back to you? And he said, no need. No need. So I don't pay any more attention. He takes me back to my car. I can hear like a diesel engine running, too, and it was, I still remember this, and I swear, I promise you, this is a true, a true story. And I'm still emotional about it today. Now my son, he's bigger than I am, he's all grown up. I'm putting the gas in my car, and I notice the headlights are illuminating the, the back end of my car so I can see to pour the gas and not make a mess. And I fill um, the car with the contents of the gas can. And I put the lid back on the gas cap, the gas cap back on, and I put the can in the trunk, and I start the car and praise Jesus the car started, the heat was on, and my baby was getting warm. And I go to thank him, and I see the headlights, and it's a, a semi-truck parked there, lighting my car up. So I walk up to the, um, the cab, and I ask the kind of burly truck driver, do you, did you see where that car left? I wanted to thank him for helping me get some gas. He said, son, 
I was illuminating your car so you could put gas in it. I said, son, there was no car. There was no car there. And that is a true story. 1976, I was touched by an angel. And I will share other stories with you. But wow, when that driver told me, son, it's me that has been illuminating your car with my headlights. I got my brights on for you. I seen you struggle. I said, son, I just pulled up. There's no car there. I wanted to share that with you. Do a video response. Isn't, isn't our Heavenly Father wonderful? Don't you just love Jesus with all your heart? I love you so much. God bless. Let me hear your story now. And thank you, Kay. And thank you, everybody. I love you so much.